Tuesday, September 28th, 2021. I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here, ladies and gentlemen. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, but you decided to be here with me, and I appreciate that, and more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Oh, man, I tell you, we got an action-packed show. I got a special guest who's on my screen. We're going to vibe with him today. But before I do that, I always like to state my intentions. My intentions is always to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life's transition. So that's what we do here. And speaking of honest conversation, we have my special guest here today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read this extensive bio by my guest, so bear with me, okay? Because I don't want to miss anything with this young man here, okay? So my special guest, as a positive energy coach, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, mentor, and athlete, my guest captivates with an optimistic outlook on life, whether working with teens, college students, athletes, organizations, or anyone seeking inspiration. And my guest engages and elevates everyone he encounters. He's a Philadelphia native, and he's one-fifth, one-fifth of the class of 1993. And that class there changed the culture of Manhattan College basketball for the better. That class, we're going to talk about that a little bit. He is a Manhattan College Athletic Hall of Fame inductee. He got in there. The guy's nice. He was nice in those streets. We're going to talk about that as well. He is the voice. The voice of the men's and women's basketball team there at Manhattan College. He is also, check this, dig this, ladies and gentlemen. He is also co-host of Mac Chat, the podcast, and the Pick and Pop podcast as well. And this young man is a former teammate of mine and a business partner of mine. And I always say with pride, this young man is a my brother from another mother. So ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, please help me welcome Mr. Chris smooth williams to transition tuesdays hold on smooth hold on i gotta get the claps hold on hold on brother one second here we go ha! what's good uncle smoothie uh, well thank you so much Russ. i appreciate that introduction man you make me feel so good and comfortable on here oh no problem no problem i want to get some shout outs first so we got our guy charlie nelson is in the building charlie says Two of the greatest human beings ever in one place. Wow. What a show. Oh, thank you, Charlie. We appreciate you, my man. We also got Felicia on the check-in. She says, welcome, Chris B. Williams, Uncle Smoothie. She's checking in as well. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, so Smooth, man, I know you watch, you know, you, you have a residency on this show, but you never came on as a guest, but... What I do for yeah, what I do for my guests is I play music for my guests because I'm a music you know aficionado. I think I claim to be that myself. But I'm gonna play this song for you there, Smoothie. You tell me when you first heard this song, what you thought of it, and when I hear this song, I think of you. So let me rock this song for you here. Hold on one second. All right, tell me if you can hear. Here it goes. Coming up. <laughs> Can you hear that? It might be tough on your phone. Can't hear it? No. Ah, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Wait a second. So smooth. Get it. I thought I was going to. That's right. Yep. Philly, Philly team. You're three times dope. <laughs> man, that's cool, man. Oh, man, yes. Man, I, yeah, I thought I was going to stop. Huh? What, what was that smooth? What did he say? <laughs> I know, yep. I was going to throw some Kurt Franklin on, but I wanted to throw you off the beaten path. You know what I'm saying, smooth? So I played some three times dope. 
But smoothie, man. Hey, man. I, I'm, you know, I'm glad for you to come on, man. You know, because again, like, again, you got a residency here all the time. But again, this is a first because again, I, this is the first time I get a chance to interview you. You know, see what's going on, see what goes on with you, man. So, you know, like I was, I guess early on, man. How are you and your family coping with these two pandemics we got? We got COVID, and also we got social injustice in in this country. So, how are you and your family coping with these two pandemics going on right now? Absolutely, absolutely. We got Tracy on the check-in. She says, hey, Chris, the best positive mindset coach. Let's go with a number of O's. Out here in Florida, appreciate the love. Oh, that's good. That's good, man, man. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, these pandemics are something else, man, what, you know, what we're going through and everything like that. So, hey, Big Smooth, man, you know, I know a lot about you. You know, the people want to know a lot about you. But I want to talk about you as a young guy in Philadelphia, man. So, how was it growing up in Philadelphia, in Philly, in the mean streets of Philly? How was it growing up, man? Well, again, I was very fortunate and blessed to get Russ, just having a very good support system. And it starts with my parents, yeah. my mother, and my family. And I was always that kid where everyone kind of looked after me. And I thank God for suffering. And as I always tell people, my first love was football. Really? Philly's a huge football town. Mm-hmm. And ironically, I was a Dallas Cowboy. Wow. Oh, so you're not happy today, Smooth. No, I'm not happy. Okay. Right. Hey, Smooth, Charlie Nelson says, were you a wide out? Great question. Mm. Started running back, and like I said, I wanted to be Tony Dorsett. Mm-hmm. Played running back first, tight end second, quarterback to close out my career. Mm, okay. <laughs> now, speaking of Tony Dorsett, did you see him at the game last night? He was in the skybox. I see him. looked really good. Yeah. I had hurt him times, but he looked great. Yeah. And I said, that was, all my shirts had 33 on them. Yep. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. Hey, so, okay, so when did you stop playing football? Was it like a time in which maybe you got hit or or something like that? Like, why why'd you stop playing football? Yes, Russ, yes, indeed. <laughs> My that I played quarterback. For some particular reason, this game, my offensive line wasn't blocking as well as they used to do. Right. <laughs>
never let you go on to that. We were always so competitive. Mm, I see, I see. We got our guy Jason Benton, man, one of Jasper's finest, man. The man child. He says, what's... <laughs> Yeah, he says, my guy Smooth and Russ, my guy. Yes, shout out to you, JB, man, absolutely. Hey, Smooth, now you know, you know, back then now, you know, you got to you gotta give some incentives to your blockers, man. Maybe you should have bought some fries for them or something. I don't know, man, so they can block for you, man. Russ, they have been blocking well all season, but for some reason, I remember this game like yesterday. Huh? Okay. I played for the Wildcats. We were always good. Mm -hmm. The game, these guys were just coming in. It was trash talking at that young age, and they were just getting a lot of good shots on us. We won the game, but I paid the price. Mm. Hey, Smooth. Hey, man. Charlie Nelson, shout out. And Charlie, you know, I appreciate everybody, you know, on the check in, too, for my guy Smooth here. Charlie says, Hey, Russ, weird coincidence. I see Peter Crandall is watching this. He was one of my high school athletes. He was one of my he was one of my high school athletes, and I was fortunate enough to coach him to coach when he was in high school. Incredible young man. Haven't seen him in person since he graduated. Yeah, shout out to you, Peter, man. Shout out to you, man. Make you make yourself known here, Peter. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, yeah. And Peter says, hey, hi, hi, Russ. Hi, Charlie. Yes, Peter. Welcome. Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Oh, no doubt. So so smooth. Okay, so you get we getting hit the whole nine. So and you said you were getting bigger. So like, yeah. Quarterback was a taller player. Yep. You know, athlete. Uh, I did not want to become a quarterback. Honestly, I really enjoyed being a running back or a tight end. I love playing tight end. Mm. I Right. I think because it heals my IQ and it helped me tremendously. Okay. Become a leader, and I think that carried over into basketball also. As a point guard, you lead yourself. Yeah. I thought that was. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hey, so smooth. Like, when did you? When you know? So, bas football was your first love, then basketball your second love, but. You know, when did you get like a good taste of basketball? Like, was it was it a one person that introduced you into the sport, or was it that one coach who was like, you know, it looks like you might be a talented player? You know, was it that one person for you, man, in basketball? Well, I wouldn't say the one person. Okay. Yeah, my first, my father, mm -hmm. and I have to give a tremendous amount of credit. And as I said during my Hall of Fame speech, he would always treat me like a professional. And what I mean by that is, tell me the things I need to do to be good. Mm -hmm. on the field or on the court, and mm -hmm. then after game, break things down, and the one thing that sticks out is when I would always pout and get so upset after games, I would take these games so serious and literal. Uh-huh. kid who knew everything about the sport, at least I thought I did. Right. I knew all the players, maybe a little bit more advanced than guys at that time period, so I would get so upset with guys because they couldn't do what I could do. Mm -hmm. And after And my pop sat me down one day and said, listen, if you're going to continue to act like this, you can't play at all. Wow. And I just realized, listen, man, you have to go out there and enjoy yourself and play. Everybody's not going to be able to play like you, and you have to live with it. Mm-hmm. Man, man, so your dad laid down the law on that one. Okay, cool. Coach who took the most interest early on was Mr. Sutton. Mm -hmm. He was my coach. So let's talk. Okay, so you talked about Cardinal Doherty, right? That's the high school you attended, correct? All right. Well, I went to St. Benedict first. Right. And then that led to Doherty, yes. Okay. So let's let's talk about your high school days, Smooth. Talk to me about your teams. Like, did you, when you were a freshman, did you play varsity, you played JV? Did they have freshman ball back then?
Mm-hmm. I'm big on relationships, still am to this day. Yeah. Playing with my guys, probably good enough to play at the next level, but I, I love that I played freshman basketball. Mm-hmm. Which my sophomore season, where I played varsity basketball, did not have a great year because I wasn't happy at all. Because I wasn't playing with my guys. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you played three years of varsity basketball, which is cool. I mean, yeah, because, like, for me, I'm just going back for myself. I played freshman basketball, loved it. Played JV, then got moved up when the varsity was continuing on, and then junior and senior year, I played on the varsity. I, I wasn't a prodigy like yourself, Smooth. You know what I mean? I had to go through the ranks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm hmm. Can't allow people to quote unquote punk you. Yeah. So I knew I had to be able to play, but I always categorized my guy, myself as one of those guys who just can move. Mm hmm. And I have to be the best player, and I know I'm not the worst player, but if you put me out there, I'll be able to do something to help a team. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Hey, so smooth. Like when you were in high school, who did you pad your game after? Was it that one player that you pad your game after, man? Pooh Richardson from UCLA, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. I went to Ben Franklin High School, mm-hmm. and I would always look in the newspaper. My only goal going into high school, and I've told this story many times, I just wanted to get my name in the newspaper. That's it, right? So we just want the clippings. To have my name in the paper, and if I got a picture, it's a wrap. <laughs> so I wanted to get in the paper. My guy was Pooh Richardson. I love Nate Blackwell, Lionel Simmons, and I had the opportunity. Right. When Doug came down to my park, Philly Playground, mm-hmm. Doug put things in perspective for me. Never had a conversation with him during that time period. But when I had a chance to play against him, I had read about him. People talked so highly of him. And in my mind, I said, this guy isn't that good, but he's good. I can be as good as he can be. Mm-hmm. And he had hope and that confidence that, you know what, I can take this to the next level. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. We got we got Miss OD, Miss Odessa joining in from Lumberton, North Carolina. What's up, Miss OD? Welcome to Transition Tuesday. What was that, Spoon? I'm sorry. Happy birthday in order for her. Yes, there you go, Spoon. Look, look, look. Look, 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 look. See that positive energy just 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 shining through. Look at that, man. <laughs> hey, Spoon. Speaking of parks, man, because you know, like in New York City, the parks was the thing back there, and your park too. Like, was your park that you played in, was it like two courts? Because sometimes when you go to these parks, it's a court A and a court B. Like, the court A is like the, you know, the catch. Hey, man, you can't step on this main court. You know, you just go on this side. Was, was your park like that with the, with the best players playing? The B court. Yep. Again, I spend a lot of time on the B court. Yep. And it's a I was introduced to the A court. I'm about 14, 15. Uh-huh. All watching guys play on the A court, obviously. Yep. Oh. Now, old head by the name of George Dutton. Mm. George Dutton. The young fella is so good, put him on over here with us. And they tried to pressure me and put the heat on me, and I handled it well. From that day forward, I stayed on the A-Core. You stayed on the A-Core. You just lived there. <laughs> now, Smooth, I don't know how it was in Philly, but in New York, like, you, when you playing, right, and, you know, you playing on the court, and then guys get next. So... You know, a lot of times, you know, you might lose, but you're hoping that cat who has next can, you know, 
kicked you a little spot there. But sometimes they, they, they play the role. They're like, nah, you know, I got my team, whatever, this and that, and the third. So was it ever a situation like that for your park? I was very fortunate. I was one of those guys who often get picked up. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we got, and I was that honest guy, so like if it was a bad call, someone said, well, Chris, what do you think? So it started with <laughs> early for me. So I was one of those guys oftentimes after a loss, I would get picked up and spend a lot of time on the court. But I had a number of guys who were really good at my park. I don't know if you remember Jason and Carl and Worley. Yes. Mm-hmm. They played in my park. and a very good point guard by the name of Marvin Du Bois, who I used to love playing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true, man. And, you know, for those millennials might be watching, man, it was, you know, playing in the park, sun up, sun down. You know what I mean? It was like, you know, what I used to do back in the day was, you know, I used to watch the NBA on, I think it was on NBC or CBS, on CBS actually. And then I used to go outside and just emulate Remember Dr. J behind up. You know, I couldn't jump like Dr. J, but I just try to emulate the moves and stuff like that. But, you know, these this is a lost start. I mean, the kids don't even play in the playgrounds anymore. They're like barren now, you know? Yeah, I remember that well, Russ. I remember Sundays. Mm-hmm. Sunday afternoon, we'd come home from church, watch the ball game. Yep. After the game, like you said, go straight to the park. Everybody comes around the same exact time because obviously the game just ended. Yep. So you said emulate some of those moves, and mm-hmm. that's what started, man. And I yep. really enjoyed that part. And my friends were so big for me. Good friend of mine, Andre Hayes, will work out with me. Mm. My boy, boy Champy Boy, who you know, mm-hmm. will work out. So these guys kind of knew, and they would help me in certain areas, would push me. But the great thing about my friends, Russ, they never gave me an inkling that I was good. Wow. They would push me so hard. Yep. Right. <laughs> that's good. Keeping the inner circle tight, man. That's good stuff. Cool. Hey, Smooth, let's let's talk about your high school days, man. How, how were your how were your teams? How'd you guys fare? Like, you know, sophomore, junior, senior year. How, you know, how were your teams? You know, do you still keep in contact with your teammates today? You know, talk to me a little about your teams in high school. And again, Russ, I told you I'm about relationships. Yeah. Hmm. My name was Central. Excellent school, all boys school. Had to take a test to get in. Wow. Okay. I was a decent student. I was an A and B student in eighth grade. So yep. Six, seven. Yep. I really botched up the test on purpose. I did not want to go to Central. I wanted to go to Cardinal Doctor. <laughs> sabotage it. Sabotage it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Number 
in our team, but I was still solid. I was considered one of the top 15 juniors in the city of Philadelphia. Wow. That was one of the first times I saw my name in the newspaper in a positive light. Yep. And that's really just worked so hard going into my senior season. Mm-hmm. And going into my senior season, Russ, I would work out every day early at 6 a.m. Would you really? At 6 a.m. Okay. I would get up. And the crazy thing about me is I never went to camp. I never went to a five-star. I heard about all these guys. Like, I would hear about a Kenny Anderson. Yep. All the top. Yeah. Country. Being all, hearing about what they could do. But ironically, we talked about Jason and Carlin. They played at my park. Carlin was one of the top juniors. Well, yeah, one of the top juniors in the country. Wow. So he would want to go. He would come back and tell me, Chris, these guys aren't that much better than you, if they are. Right, right. It fueled my confidence. But again, all I really wanted to do was want to be, wanted to be one of the top players in the city. Yep. I just want better players in the city of Philadelphia. But that fueled me going into my senior season. Yeah. We were good my senior year, worked well together. I was moved from the two-guard position to the point-guard position. My recruiting went from Division two two guard mm-hmm. to a mid mid major solid division one point guard. Wow. Hey, Smooth, a couple of things, man, because uh, I'm going to get back to how, how you and I are kindred spirits, and I'll say the reason why is because I'll tell you, I've had that same conversation with my mom when I was going to Catholic school because I, I was going to public school, you know, throughout my middle school years. But I remember having a conversation with my mom. I said, Mom, listen, if I go to this Catholic school, you pay the tuition, I'm going to get a college scholarship, so you don't have to worry about that. So, Same conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I will get a scholarship. You will not have to pay a dime going forward. Very fortunate. Again, I keep saying the same cliche. Fortunate and blessed that it worked out that way. My senior, senior, senior season was bananas. I love being a point guard because I had the ball in my hand, but I could make others better. Mm-hmm. days as a quarterback, right. just being able to be a leader, making decisions, and trying to keep other people in positions where they could be successful. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Smooth, we got Donna on the line. She says, hey, bro. And then she says, she says, Chris, you always been on top since St. Saint, since Benedict's. That's what she says. What's going on, Donna? What's up, Donna? Now, check this out. Mm-hmm. I have to keep up to the ladies from St. Benedict's. Donna Jordan has been one of my childhood friends since I was in grade school. Yes. Dina Cummings. These young ladies would do anything to assist me as my friend. Wow. Not, I said earlier about my boys, the young ladies would not allow Chris to get anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember being in school, getting decent grades, and everybody in the class, the ladies were like, all right, Chris, all right, you're doing well, but enough is enough. We, we don't need you around here gloating and walking around here <laughs> like you got. I appreciate that. Yeah. Because Absolutely, absolutely. And we got Kathleen Torres is on the ca- on the check. And uh, Kathleen says, yes, yeah, she goes, Russ and Chris. She says, Kathleen Lyons Torres, so proud of you both, inspiring others, including my kids. Oh, spectacular. What's going on, Kathleen? <laughs> nice. Kathleen, another one, Russ. Yes. Not to get beyond yourself. Yes. Kathleen, we haven't gotten to college yet. Yep. <laughs> we we go whole last story, Smoot. We go we gonna talk about that. Yeah, we, we are, we are. And Donna says she says that Chris, you had the best handwriting too. That's good. Penmanship is important. I've lost it. I used to have very good penmanship. <laughs> I'm like a hot now. Yeah. 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 And these kids nowadays, they don't, they don't write letters or anything like that. Everything is typing, you know, type man and all this stuff like that. So yeah. Hey, so smooth. So we, we talk about the high school days. So talk to me about your recruiting process. Like, who was involved in the recruiting process? And uh, give me your, if you can remember, your top three schools that you had on the board. Again, the recruiting process was interesting for me, Russ. Mm-hmm. When it when it started recruiting me, I was so flat. Mm-hmm. I wanted was to get my name in the newspaper. That's it. So Yeah. So guys come watch so you know you must be doing something well. Right. Uh, they call Lissimo came to see me play. <laughs> so I'm letters from schools all over the place. 
Yeah. I have no idea how this process works. My parents don't either. Right. Right, right. So, in my head, this is what I'm thinking. I think if anyone sends you a letter, they want you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> letters, I'm thinking all the schools want me. If I go there, I'm going to play. Yes. So, I narrow it down to the schools in Philadelphia. I'm thinking I'm a Philly guy. My mindset is if you're from Philly, you have to go to a Philly school. Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. Scholarship. Uh huh. Temple Park didn't offer me a scholarship. Manhattan offered me a scholarship. Loyal to Maramount offered me a scholarship. So, mm. again, my top three schools during that time period were Loyal to Maramount, LaSalle, and if I remember correctly, uh, <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, on the this I like. Okay, okay, cool. Everybody wants you if you go there. Right. Really? Oh, wow. I on a radio show. During that time period, if you remember correctly, mm-hmm. you do. Mm-hmm. They had Andy Woods, Doug Overton, two NBA guards. Yes. Coach Speedy Morris, Mason Clearly, Chris, you're probably not going to play your first or maybe your second year. Okay. That tells me if I go there, I'm going to play. Correct. Move. I was I was out. I was basically out of there. Yep. But again, both of you guys never bad mouth the school. Right. Negative thing about the team program. Both of you were very nice. I was under the impression you're saying. Yeah. Walking around campus, students are saying hello to me from afar. Hey yo. You know, I don't understand it. They thought I was you. Right, 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 absolutely. <laughs>
Yeah. There was Eric Gothi. He's a class guy. Mm -hmm. I hear hard stories about guys having bad teammates. That was never an issue for me. You were one of my favorite teammates. And again, I call guys my favorite teammates. Everybody was my favorite in some yeah. regard. Yeah. I had such a time when we had so much fun. Yep. And it made so But I was so nervous when I first got there. <laughs> Hey, Swoo, we got our guy Stan, the man, Anderson. He says, howdy, buds. <laughs> yes, yes. And Donna says, yep. She says, yes, left-handed. She talked about you being left-handed. She said, your dad was no games. And she says, what a presentation from New York. This is all Donna. Donna you know, she's talking to us about that, too. So, yeah, man. So, man. Hey, Swoo. Uh, oh, so Donna says, I'm loving this family. Love you, Chris, family for life. That's right. That's right. Donna for life in Philly. Yes. Yes. Hey, so smooth, man. So, like I tell people all the time, that class, that class of 93, man, I really, that was like the, I guess that was the mid-major Fab Five. I mean, that you guys came in. I, that's how I looked at it because it was a it was a person for every position. You know what I mean? And, and that class and Coach Lapis changed the culture of Manhattan College, I think, for the better. Forever, because you know, it, yeah, you know, but yep. So it, you know, because I I like to say like, you guys took a chance on going to Manhattan College because you guys could have went anywhere. But I think what a great thing that Coach Lapis did was he recruited guys like yourself and the four other guys because you guys were coming from winning programs. You guys are winners, so that made the transition much easier, you know, for you guys. So so smooth. Talk about transitions. How was that transition, man, for you from playing high school in Philly to playing in Manhattan College? How was that transition for you? Well, as far as basketball, the transition was a little difficult. I yep. had to adjust to everything that a freshman has to adjust to. Yep. The speed up the game. Yeah. The physical. You mm -hmm. know, my freshman, sophomore year, both of us would have to lift half the practice. Yes. Like Mm -hmm. Again, I play. Mm -hmm. I had swag, and in all honesty, I was a little disrespectful to the league mm -hmm. and to players when I came in. And mm -hmm. what I mean by disrespectfully is that coming out of Philly, I'm thinking I'm going to play against a Doug Overton type player every game. Right. So again, when I played against guys who weren't quote unquote the level that I thought they would, I kind of thought, you know, I should be able to do certain things, mm -hmm. but it's not. Everybody's a Division One player. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can remember going over the scout reports. Coach Lapis and his staff, Ryan Ford, Coach Begley, Coach Leonard, would do a tremendous job putting all this information in the scout report yeah. about certain players. Again, no rock was unturned early on in Manhattan. Definitely not. We would watch video. We would watch the entire game. And in my head, I'm thinking, like, some of these guys aren't that good. And I was struggling. My freshman and sophomore year, and again, it's a part of being selfish. Why aren't I in all these players? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to this day, I would sometimes be like, come on, smooth, come on, Chris. You can't be an all league player. But I realized when you're on a team with a number of solid players, mm -hmm. and that's you, Russ, yeah. body can't be an all league player. Yeah. You just don't. Mm -hmm. you can't have eight all league players from an act. And know all these players from other teams. Yep, that's and true. Part of my job was sacrificing some of my game. And some of that was I just wasn't the guy for certain areas. For example, going into our sophomore year, I became a star. Yep. Because I was so hard in the summer getting myself better. Mm -hmm. But again, it didn't relate to us winning that many more games as a point guard. Because I was selfish. Mm. I was selfish. And I can honestly tell you that. Mm. Because certain times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I love that Coach Lapis did at Manhattan, we don't talk about this enough, we would always have to go to the office every day. Oh. Check in before practice. Right. As much as I despise doing that, during those check-ins, I would have some really good conversations with Coach Lapis and the staff about becoming a better point guard. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, I know some guys would be able to just come and say, hey, what's up, and leave out. Every time I came 
That was me. That was me, Smooth. <laughs> I need to talk to Smooth. Like, oh, right, right. Sure. That's right. That's right. Yeah, like I tell people all the time, Smooth, like you were the only person who could have handled that particular role, like coming off the bench, you know, being a, you know, from a starter going going to the bench, but knowing your role, I think you you are the one you are the one guy who made the ultimate sacrifice. Not a lot of guys would have did that. I know that for a fact. Hey, Smooth, man, we got Donna. So Donna has a couple of things. She's she's having a conversation with Tracy, which is phenomenal. I love it. Don, Donna says, Donna says, offense sells tickets, defense wins games. Absolutely. They, the good point there, Donna. Yes. And then she says, hey, Leah, what's going on, Leah? What's up, Benjamin? If you're out there. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And she goes, and, and Donna, we're going we're gonna to talk about this question in a few, but Donna has the question, Chris, was there ever was there ever any NBA interest? We're going to talk about that because I know Chris has a good story about that. And then Tracy says, Tracy says, Chris, you should coach kids in sports. You were so passionate. And and then Donna went on to say that they're having a running dialogue, which is good. I love it. I love it. Uh, Donna says, he does one-on-one training with kids. Yes, he does. We're going to talk about that. Yes. Uh-huh. Now, Tracy also goes on to say, Tracy says, I am hosting a wellness event for my client's third year anniversary this Saturday and Sunday. Saturday is all about the ladies. Zumba, facials, uh, B12 shorts, and, and so much more on Sunday is, is the men's spa day. And Chris will be a speaker speaking about positive. Hold on a second. Let me just break that down. Speaking about positive mindset and mental health. You are all invited. Okay. Oh, so so smooth. Let's, yeah, talk to talk to us. Yeah, talk to us a little about that smoothie. We're trying to keep everybody healthy. Tracy's a big proponent of that. Mm-hmm. Does a great keeping people in shape, putting the correct supplements in your body, all the things you need during this time period to be ready against anything. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm gonna just bring my energy and talk about what I like to talk about, which coincides with what you see needs to be done. That's on Sunday. So anybody in that South Florida area. Put some information up later, letting you know I will be in the building on Sunday. But ladies, it's all you on Saturday. But Uncle Smoothie's in the building on Sunday. Nice, nice. And Tracy, while you're listening, type in in the comment bar maybe you know some information on the event. We'd love to get that out to the people. Perfect, perfect. And then Leah says she'll be there. That's right. All right, representing. I love it. Hey, so smooth. Okay, 
So your travels in Manhattan College, you know, I want to talk about leadership, Smooth, because like you, you will go down as one of the one of the best leaders. And you know how you talked about leadership earlier, like is you had that leadership gene. You know, a lot of people don't have that. So was this something that was developed? Is this something you born with? You think you know how was that leadership gene? You know, can you explain the leadership gene that that you had, man? Yes. Somebody can be the lead guy. You have to have some role players. Absolutely. Even role players aren't as good as the lead person, but mentally they have to accept their role. Mm -hmm. From an early age, my parents always taught me to be selfless. Mm -hmm. I can remember my mom always saying, as good as you think you are, Chris, there's someone better. Mm -hmm. And that was all humble. Yeah. Like I said, my dad would tell me, if you're going to act like this, you can't play at all. <laughs> so I knew going forward sometimes you would be the best player in certain situations but to be ultimately successful you would need to help them if you could Yeah. I learned later in Manhattan when everybody's happy the thing works so much better yeah. that's one thing we had as a team Russ even when we weren't winning early on we enjoyed working with one another mm -hmm. Yep. Guys were sacrificing early, but they didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm you a perfect example, Russ. And I can remember Lapis telling you, Russ, your scoring needs to go down to help guys like Smooth. Yeah, I didn't like that either, Smooth. I, I, mean, I, I let little Coach Lap know that when I had him on. I did not like that going to my senior year, but I digress. <laughs> Mike Brown, yep, showbiz, Mike Brown, yep. Showbiz Brown. Mm -hmm. I remember we were winning. When showbiz Brown came up to me, <laughs> I was well, he's like, young fellow, you guys are playing well now, you're just going to have to shut this down. <laughs> but I, we're starting to turn the corner, we're catching the attention of the better teams in the league. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Hey, Smoke, talk to me about, um, I want to talk about your senior year and, you know, the leadership, because you were the leader of that team, you know, you know, had Fran Fischilla coming in, 
And but again, I think a lot of the leadership abilities, like you were the coach. You were basically the coach of that team, you know what I mean? With Fran being so new and fresh. But talk to me smooth about winning that MAC championship, going to the NCAA tournament. But but the folklore about it is my man Uncle Smoothie hits the winning free throw for you goes for you guys to go in the tournament. So talk to me a little bit about that, Smooth. Oh, yeah. Forgiven. Wow. That's right.
Definitely, definitely. Hey, Donna, I love Donna's conversation. Donna, you're the best. So Donna says, wow, $50,000 shot. She's laughing her butt off. Then she talks about that. And then shout out to Tracy, too, who, who put up the link for the event coming up. Shout out to you, Tracy. I'm sure people are going to attend that on the strength of you putting that up. Perfect, perfect. And um, Donna says, I never thought your bench should be Division One as well. <laughs> she says <laughs> I guess Donna was watching the games back then. You know what I mean? And But Donna makes a good point, and, and I want to get to this. So Donna talks about your mom. So when she goes, your mom was always kind and, and smiling. You know, so soft in spirit, so beautiful. Smooth, so I want to talk, you know, because I you know, I had a good relationship with your mom as well. Talk to me about a little bit about your mom. And tell me about, was there one piece of advice that your mom gave you that, that sticks to your mind to this day? With your mom, with Mama Williams, I you know I used to love that lady. Oh man, I love her. Rest her soul. My yes. Mom was, because again, she wasn't really a basketball fan. Right. She loved basketball because that's where I started. Uh huh. Kind of warm up to basketball. Mm. My mom was more concerned about extracurricular activities, what was going on at the game. Like she really enjoyed like when we were beating someone bad. She liked to see Greg Rock get out there and go bananas. She yeah. enjoyed that. Uh huh. Right. And the advice my mom would always give me was just enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. Have fun. I love when my mom would come up to games. She would always uh, fry a big pan of Yep. We would have wanted everybody to come by to have some. And she would always jokingly say, We're living like kings up here. Because the idea of me having my own room, being, you know, stress me, room and board, yep. taking care of my parents. Right. So that was different. So she just really wanted me to enjoy the process. I can remember her writing the letters like, Chris, do you need anything? What do you need? I was like, Mom, everything's cool. You know, she makes sure, are you reading the Bible? Or, you know, those type things that yeah. moms do. Yep. And really on time. Just on the money. Yeah. That, uh, all of our parents yeah. were in that life. I can remember going over your house for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Yes. With Crazy Eddie. Mm hmm. With, with Keith. Yep. You know, Don Elliott. I remember Don came to my house. Yep. Guys, and those are the things you remember most. You know, just hearing Don laugh. Yes. Like that. Okay. <laughs> Watch now. I know he's in the background laughing. Ah! Ah! I, yes. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's funny because I, I remember to this day, like, think like images that come into my mind. I remember when everybody came to my house and I remember Carrie Wilson taking off his shirt because he ate so much. You know, I remember that. I remember that image, you know. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, oh, man, it's crazy. We got, uh, we got Rudy Wood. She says, um, Aunt Jean and Terrell are tuning in, my nephew. Yeah. The people who really raised me up during time periods when things weren't going well, encouraging me. So I appreciate that. It's all love. My auntie Jean is the best. And I spoke with her a little bit earlier. My cousin Terrell has done a tremendous job looking at him after his mom. But those are the things that your family needs to do, has to do. And I learned that early. My cousin Junior was big in my development. Mm -hmm. I talked about her. My cousin Ross always encouraging me. I don't know if he's one here, Ross Ross. Mm -hmm. But those. Absolutely, man. Absolutely smooth. Hey, smooth. I want to touch on. So, 
you know, after the tournament, you know, you graduate to have you. I know you work for the Phillies. You know, I know you work with me with Johnson. You know, I, I did a 15-year bid. You did a 20-year bid. You know what I mean? We were, we were business partners. You know, we were backcourt mates then, and we were backcourt mates, you know, in business as well. But I want to go back to Donna's question about, did you have any NBA aspirations after college? Mm-hmm. That common goal. Yep. Now, I told someone on another interview, two of the movies I would always watch, watch my senior year, Carrie Edwards can attest to that as my movie. <laughs> I would always watch uh, Boomerang. Boomerang, Marcus Graham, yes. One of my favorite movies to this day. Yes. That movie over and over. And the other movie with Tommy Davidson, Holly Berry, uh, with the Hudley Brothers. I can't think of the name. Oh. Uh, Risky business? No. Strictly business. Yes, strictly business. Yes, strictly business. Yes. And Boomerang were tight in my rotation. I wanted to be Marcus Grant. Yes. Teddy Murphy in that movie. I had put in my mind, once I graduate, I'm going to get me a good job, have a nice place, and have nice ladies. Yep, just, just like Marcus. <laughs> I wanted to be Marcus. Yep. Right? Hey, Smooth, hold, hold that thought for a second, Smooth. Hold that thought because we got we got my man Justin Phoenix on the check-in. Justin, yeah, Justin says, Smooth. He says, Smooth. He says, my man, Russ, what up, big dog? And then Justin goes on to say, Smooth, is that why you punch Hyman below the belt? I don't know about that. <laughs> Okay. Remember correctly, he's an up and coming young Thundercat. He's a fresh guy coming up. Yep. Phoenix, they want to play. Ribs is touching. They ready. Yep. They ready to rock. Yep. So I can remember maybe a day where Keith is a little bit too aggressive. Other ones in the chops down there. Like, that's part of the process. That comes with the game. Part of the process. Part of the process. Hey, Spoon, before you get back to that story. Tracy says, Chris, you look the same. She says, hashtag black don't crack. All right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, Smooth, talk to us about, you, you talk about uh, uh, Cleary was a video coordinator. Right. Uh-huh. Yes. St. John's. Yep. So was uh, many scouts there. A lot of scouts were at those games. Mm-hmm. I played well during that tournament. Mm-hmm. I remember we lost both games. So again, I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. I remember Coach Terry in passing said, Smooth, a couple of scouts thought you could play. Mm. Never gave me. Right. After my senior year is over, again, I'm going past the office, same process, checking in. And Coach Begley Boston Celtics. Wow. Yeah, play, we'll take care of that if you're interested. Now, again, like I said, I had checked out on Right. Only come once in a while. You know, I'll, I'll run with these guys if I felt like it. But if not, I'm hanging out. I'm enjoying the remainder part of my senior season. Yep. So I basically told these guys, I said, listen, I can't do it. I appreciate it because I will be doing myself an injustice. I will be doing the Celtics an injustice. Mm. And I'm working so hard. Mm. So, so, but I did appreciate that someone saw that there's a possibility this guy can play at the next level. Mm-hmm. Man, there you go. That sacrifice again. It, there it is. Well, no, yeah. one, one sacrifice, but I had taken myself out of that room. I always tell people I was passionate about football. I dreamed and imagined myself playing the NFL. Mm-hmm. And all of Mm. Told this story back in Philadelphia. I got my first taste of it. I never played Sunny Hill basketball until my senior season. Mm. 
Yes. Absolutely, yeah. We got Justin saying, yeah, Philly's finest out of the smooth who we have on hand. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, we got my man, Mr. Chris Williams, a.k.a. Uncle Smoothie, on the check-in here, joining us here, special guest here today. Donna says, she gets your story there, Smooth. She says, I get that. She says, I understand the loss and in interest. My son had a state title but never had a dream of the Olympics. Um, I'm just a mom that will cultivate wherever Zaire is interested in. So yes, yeah, you know, same type of same type of feel. Yeah. Hey, Smoothie, man, I want to talk. I got two more questions for you. This, this question I want to talk to you about is, you know, what you do now, Smooth. You know, as a positive any energy coach, uh, I want you to talk to us about, you know, what that's all about. And, uh, you know, I want you to talk about, you know, your passion for that because you're very passionate, as we all can see. You're very passionate about that. And you're very passionate about being on the air, you know, as an analyst, you know, uh, you know, being being the voice of the Jaspers, being on ESPN as well. But talk to us about, you know, your positive energy experience, your positive, being a positive energy coach, and then we'll talk about, you know, your experiences as, as an analyst as well. And you're passionate about doing that, and I know you're passionate about what you do on the, you know, on the microphone too, you know, at Manhattan on ESPN. So, talk to me about those endeavors as well, Smooth. Customer service. 
Spool, we got Donna, and I love Donna. Donna, Donna is like you know she's keeping the chat lines over. I love it, Donna. I appreciate you too. Donna says, "Chris, you have found your purpose, your life purpose, your life purpose in your passion with basketball." And then she also went on to say, "Yes, luxury florals, Leah T. Williams, you are phenomenal. That's right, Leah. I don't know if you're behind the scenes. You need to come out that camera. You need to come in the camera, man. You know what I mean? But I, you know, I digress on that one. But." Yes, absolutely. Phenomenal. Phenomenal at that. Hey, Smooth, I got one more question for you, and then I'm going to get you out on this, man. Do you, you know, sometimes, you know, do you ever wish you can have a do-over in your basketball career and maybe personally, too, in your life? You Do you think you, you know, do you think you can have, You would you want to have a do-over in your career? And is there a do-over in your life? I'm not into do-overs. I like my experiences. Mm-hmm. Oh. My brother from another mother, you know that, man. You know I love you, man. You are like, you know, how I stated in my post, man. You are like, you are the all-time, one of the all-time givers, man. You know, for your time, your talents, your energies, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you, you're a resident here, man. You know what I'm saying, Smoothie? We got my man Justin. Justin D. Boone says, he says, good insight and discussion, guys. So, yeah, that's, that's, yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Big Spoon, my man. Thank you so much. Yes, Sue. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Hey, Smoo, how can people get in contact with you, brother? Well, we heard Chris speak here. We hear him speak often, but again, we don't get a chance to interview him. I'm glad I got a chance to do this move. I'm glad you brought this to my attention. You know what I mean? But 
But you, you know, you have a residency here, man. You know, on Transition Tuesdays. But it's always good to get your backstory because I think a lot of people didn't hear your back, never heard your backstory. So I'm glad they got an opportunity to do it today. So my man, Smooth, Uncle Smoothie, aka Uncle Smoothie, I appreciate you, my brother. Thanks again, man. Thank you so much, Russ. Keep up the good work, partner. Thank you, sir. All right, brother. <laughs> Later, man. <laughs> All right. All right, my guy. Uncle Smoothie, Chris Williams, great insight, man, into everything that he does. You know, like I talk about it all the time. You know, Chris was a guy who, uh, and and I, and I, I, the thing I'm really proud of with Chris is, you know, I've had a like a 30 plus year relationship with Chris. You know, we live with each other. You know, we work with each other. We play with each other. But he's the one guy I've never had one argument, one a minor discussion. With that guy, Chris, and that's the one thing I'm proud of. Me and me, you know, me, my myself and Chris being good friends, man. So I'm so proud of that. But thank you, Chris, for coming on, my brother. Thank you, thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, if we were able to make you laugh, smile, and think during this broadcast, my good friends, you have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory here today, please do. As I'm warming up my theme music got to get my ones and twos warm back up here <laughs> see what we got here oh let's go there we go <laughs> yes 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 ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching transition tuesdays i appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart thank you thank you thank you so much and uh if you want to see this video and other videos, just join our, just take a look at our archives on our YouTube channel, Transition Tuesdays. And when you're on our channel, please like and subscribe um, before you leave there. Make sure you do that. It's very, very important that you do that. And you can also follow me on Instagram, or as the young people say, IG, at Russ Will Transitions. That's Russ Will Transitions with an S. Follow me there. Please do. Major shout out, major, major shout out to my special guest, Mr. Chris Smooth Williams for joining us today, man. Great insight, great positive energy. Follow that guy, man. That guy is one of my, you know, like I said, my brother from another mother, man. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining the show, man. Appreciate you. Now, guests of Transition Tuesdays receive a gift candy pack, a uh, gift, uh, candy gift pack, pardon me, compliments of Sweet Candy Cafe. Now, Sweet Candy Cafe is located in downtown Lumberton, North Carolina, and it's the home for Southern Sweetness. So after the show, okay, we're almost done here. So after the show, a little homework assignment, okay? You won't be great on it, but I want you to do this. After the show, head over to SweetCandyCafe.com and order all your confectionery goodies, okay? And always keep in mind, they ship home and abroad. They ship anywhere, all right? So make sure you go on there. And again, that's SweetCandyCafe.com. So ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, as we say in parting, happy transitioning, and we'll speak to you soon. Take care, everybody. God bless. <laughs>